Well, the, the workers are not very fine because of the currency crisis you have. They can't send their children to school. They themselves find it difficult to get to the office. So it's, it's not very good. The informal sector, of course, is also, the economy is also down. You cannot buy two things. You can't buy biscuit for five for 50 naira and start uh, transferring the money. It's difficult. So things are pretty, pretty difficult in terms of um, you know, the, the, the workforce or the productive force or the productive forces. Things are very difficult. <laughs> so that, that's, that's, a, that's like the state that we So in your view, I, I, I saw some of these uh, unions, meeting, trade union uh, meeting some of these presidential candidates and other stakeholders. What are your views about, about them, say when you meet them, uh, where their expectations met, where their concerns addressed? Well, the trade unions must uh, lead their workers based on knowledge and information. And um, in, in, in terms of uh, candidates, the best persons to give such information and knowledge are, of course, the candidates themselves. So it makes a lot of sense for the trade unions who represent millions of Nigerians to make these people know what they are discussing and know the issues. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, one, it's one of a self enlightened interest. So what are some of their major concerns ahead of the elections? The, the workers, workers or the, the workers? Unions? The workers won. And of course, the, what the workers want, like the rest of society, they want a country that is at peace. They want a country they can uh, get their salaries and work for and uh, educate their children, and they get their families to the health centers as if they are sick. So basically, the workers are for this, and anybody that can provide these things will be welcome. Have they engaged the government about these concerns they have? Because it's like even the ruling party itself is not happy with the current situation on the ground. Well, you know it's a continuous thing. And when issues about industrial relations come up, of course, you engage the person. If it's government or the employer, so it's a, it's a continuous thing. Yes, the engagements are continuous. It's life. Has the Electoral Commission or INEC really given people confidence that the elections will be transparent and credible, especially when new sets of technologies appear to have been introduced to ensure a smoother process? Technologies are developed by human beings and operated by human beings. And so when you talk about, oh, okay, now you can have permanent uh, voter's card. Now there is a change maker, you know, and uh, that is uh, the card reader. Oh, fantastic, this is the end of it all. And then you now have beavers, which of course was also used in Ocean State. The issue is about simplifying elections. A lot of things about this electoral system is unnecessary. And I will give you two examples I've given before. I was once in, in Switzerland and there were elections going on, I didn't know. Except that a man came about eight minutes late, I mean, 10 minutes late for a meeting, and he said, Oh, you know how to go and vote. <laughs> Nobody knew there was an election. I mean, we who came to you know, that country. And uh, just about one and a half years ago, I was in Venezuela. And I witnessed the elections there. I witnessed the elections in a number of countries, Zimbabwe and Congo. You know, now talking about Venezuela, all you need to do is take your you know, identity card, national identity card, which you call NIN here, you know, to the voting center. They check in their system whether it's authentic. Once it's authentic, they give you the ballot paper. You mark it, you go to the corner market and put it, it's in the cardboard. And you go home, and you, you saw people coming from, it was on a Sunday, people coming from church with their children, you just enter and vote and just go. Very simple. Yet, the elections in Venezuela are quite contentious because you have um, an opposition party that seems to be pro-US mm -hmm. or American or imperialism, and you have a government in power that is against. So it's quite contentious. But there's no issue there. But in Nigeria, all sorts of things, the army is, show, is doing show of power. The police is showing show of power, carrying arms all over the place. 
you know? And so it's possible to actually discourage voters. But, but the peace and cause, do they even have any impact on the conduct of the elections and prospective voters when they want to uh, 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 go to the polls and choose who their next leaders are? For there to be any impact, there should be uh, maybe some sanctions. There are no sanctions. And nobody to, to effect anything. It's just preachments, you know? From my head of state, Abdul Salam, okay, do well, sign this one. You then get religious leaders and priests. It's just a charade as far as I'm concerned. For me, it's about justice. If you're a political leader, a candidate, and you do things that are criminal, you should be charged. I go to jail. You know, so there's you know a lot of things. I I as a Nigerian, I, I can't understand them. All these long stories.